Hey folks, Jeff and Lorena here at Back to Country. Thanks for joining us again as we rebuild this cylinder. Okay, so we got this cylinder all tore apart and we went to town and, and uh, went to Crown Products, picked up the replacement pieces. It was a little more expensive than what I thought it would be. Uh, it actually cost $57 for all the different parts and the reason for that was uh, this little baby right here, this outer seal was uh, 23 bucks and change uh, this one right here was like about 15 bucks um, and I don't know there was something else that was about 10 bucks or so uh, the these little things were you know like 50 cents each uh, this was fairly cheap maybe five bucks for the set this was again pennies uh, so all together it was 57 bucks so like I say a little more expensive than what I predicted it would be uh, but I guess a few of these uh, seals are, are you know rare or whatever so they're more expensive at the end of the day though 57 bucks to fix this is still pretty cheap when you consider uh, big equipment and of course if you take this to a shop uh, this exact rebuild is probably going to cost you anywhere from 150 to 200 dollars so still uh, relatively cheap so what we did we uh, pulled all the parts and pieces off you can see here uh, this seal was liter literally uh, disintegrated I mean it just fell apart uh, there were a whole bunch more pieces to it that we just threw away but uh, this is what it should look like that's what it did look like so that was the the problem all the other ones really didn't look that bad uh, this one here is broke, but I broke it taking off taking it off. It, it wasn't broke before uh, so you know, it only takes one seal to go bad to uh, Make it leak and you can see I mean this thing literally is just disintegrated You can see all the cracks and everything in it even where it's together. So uh, Absolutely, no doubt this was the culprit and that's what happens when these things get old uh, you know the rubber becomes weak and and cracks breaks whatever and uh, it starts leaking and whether that's an o-ring or a seal it doesn't really matter it's all it takes so next thing we got to do is uh, put this baby back together so uh, you know I guess we just grab a piece and get started so this is uh, where the inner seals were so this piece fit into here and we can literally push that in and then it's got the snap ring to, to hold it in. I didn't bring my snap ring plier over here of course. Like I say, you always forget something. didn't work it's got to snap into the groove how it works snap it into the groove so this thing this seal can move in there if it needs to but the snap ring keeps it from literally coming out we flip it over and then we've got this seal now this seal has a uh, steel casing around it probably part of the reason why it's more expensive I'll put a little bit of uh, hydraulic fluid on it just to lubricated a little bit so maybe it'll slide in a little easier but these either have to be tapped in pressed in uh, something they they aren't going to just pop in with your hand so over the years i have
needed a grease rag to wipe my hands too so over the years i i have uh put in plenty of these things with just a piece of metal and a hammer uh but today i've got a little uh bearing seal driver set that i'm going to use and basically all you're doing here is you're putting this on there so that you don't want to bend that thing you want to tap it in and you can see it's it's going in crooked and that's typically what happens which is why i think uh many of these they they press in using a press now i've got a small press i could get it out and press this in but we're going to see if we can tap it in because the average person is going to use just a flat piece of steel probably to do this because they're not going to have tools to tap these things in there we go see so just a flat really we're using the flat piece of steel here to drive that in and we've got it flush and that's all there is to it so not a difficult thing like I say there's a lot of different ways you can put it in you can tap it in like that you can press it in probably the pros are all going to use a press and press it in uh, like I say I have a small press but for a seal this small and uh, you know I didn't think it would be that difficult to get in so it wasn't even worth dragging the little press out here but I do have one could have used it these little kits this is an automotive uh, seal and bearing press kit uh, they're not very expensive it's made in China of course like everything but uh, they come in handy anyway so next thing we got to do is uh, put on the seals from the sides and so we have this, uh, these two little seals here. This one looks almost like a spacer and then an O-ring. And I can't remember which one went which direction. So what do I do? I go to my phone and I uh, go back to the pictures that I took to remind me how things went on. And so I can see my picture here and it's facing that way and so the flat spacer goes to the top and then the o-ring and so if you're like me and you don't remember everything perfectly uh, then take a picture with your phone so that you can remember Then you don't have to go to the internet and do a bunch of research and go, how in the heck does that go? And then you put it on guessing and then later you come over something in the internet showing it the other way and then you second guess yourself. And, you know, <laughs> easier to just take a picture. So these things can be a little tough to, to stretch on and get over the edges. You can use a little... Uh, pick to do this but I try not to when I'm putting these pieces back on because I'm always afraid that I'll damage it with the pick so I just try to gently stretch them over and slide them into place and so got it popped on there and then I'll just keep working it forward now like I say I could uh, use a little the smooth edge of a pick or something I guess to to get that perfectly into position or I could just as easy grab this that oil canister and it's got a little smooth edge and look how that just works perfect so again use what you got the main point is just get it into position without damaging it and then the next thing we got this o-ring to go on so we'll stretch that o-ring on it of course goes on much easier than that other spacer
or whatever that is. Remember, I'm not a mechanic. I'm just doing this as I go. So the best thing to do is uh, you take it apart and you put it back together the same way it came apart. And that's how simple it is. So now in putting this all back together, we got to remember the end cap goes on first. So I'll just slide that in and get it out of the way. And then uh, this goes on. Now this slides inside of the cylinder. So we got to put it on that way so that it can slide back inside of that cylinder. And we're just going to gently work that through so those seals go over the... Uh, cylinder rod and boy that is tight there it goes and so pulled it on there and it is good and tight which is exactly how it should be because that's what prevents that baby from leaking so we got that piece put back together so those were the bad parts out of that and these two seals so Look, we're over halfway done already. So then next we had this piece. I don't know what it's called. I'm gonna call it the plunger. <laughs> and so the plunger went on like this. And of course this O-ring goes there. Before I get to that, I need to put on these pieces. So we had this part here. The O-ring went to the inside. goes on really easy and then this went on over the top of it now these this is like a um, uh, I don't know I think it's like a Teflon or something plastic I don't know it's not real real stretchy so it's a little bit harder to work it on but it's going on pretty easy and it's on you can see the difference I mean this sticks out now it'll shrink a little bit and it'll compress into the cylinder but that's what you want you want it getting tight because that's what's keeping that hydraulic fluid from just escape escaping around it you know so this creates your pressure and moves that cylinder back and forth so you want that to be good and tight and then you got this piece uh this is of course much easier because it's a split ring and you just put that into place and BAM that we got her built and then we got one other piece which is this o-ring and that goes on over the top of the threads here work it down to the end and of course that sits right in this groove uh, on this plunger And I like to put a little little bit of hydraulic fluid on there just to kind of lubricate it ahead of time. And then we put that back on. And we got the nut to hold it all together. We'll of course have to tighten that up. That's a lock nut. And like I said, I don't have a vise here, so I'll have to take it back over and put it on the machine to hold it steady but that's all there is to that step uh, once we get that bolt tightened up then we put it back into the cylinder put the end cap tighten that back down and uh, and then we're ready to re remount it to the machine that's simple Okay, so I was able to get this nut tight uh, just here on the, the bench with a wrench. Uh, luckily, this provided enough leverage that I was able to tighten it. And that is a lock nut, so it's not going to come off. So we're good there. So the next thing we've got to do is put this together into the cylinder. So what I like to do is pre-grease everything. 
and I just use a little uh, hydraulic fluid and just uh, you know lube it up a little bit to hopefully make it slide easier in the cylinder since hydraulic fluid is what's gonna oil it anyway I figure that's a good thing to put on it so we did clean this cylinder out pretty good uh, I just used some degreaser and actually used some brake cleaner uh, to get all in and a putty knife to scrape a lot of the hard grease off of it got it all cleaned up so that is a tight fit which again exactly what we want you can hear the air flowing through there so that's the first step to get that piece in next step will be this end cap and I'm just gonna do the same thing with these o-rings just put a little hydraulic fluid on them so they slide a little bit better threaded cap to suck it down now I remember we got that big giant pipe wrench that we used to break this free and we'll use that to tighten it up once we get this back onto the machine so we got something to hold it so that's probably as far as I'm gonna oh, it goes a little bit at a time I guess I'm gonna unscrew that just to see how much that pulled it down just for viewing purposes. Since the threads are nice and clean, it unscrews and screws on real easy. Yeah, it's still got a ways to go there. That's working. Just give it a light tap with a hammer just to get it down to where it's in position. See, so it's tight now with the cylinder. That way we know we've got it in position. Otherwise, I might be guessing, you know, should I tighten it more? Should I tighten it more? Now I know it's all the way down in position. Put the cap on as far as I can get it by hand and then we'll tighten it up with the big wrench once we get it on the machine. Okay, so other than tightening this up, uh, that is literally all there is to rebuilding that cylinder. That cylinder now is completely rebuilt. Uh, it should not leak at all and should be good for many more years of use. That's what we wanted. So next thing we're gonna do is take this stuff over to the machine and uh, remount it onto the machine. Okay, so we're back over here at the machine. We hauled all our tools over here and everything that we think we're gonna need. Of course, we'll see how good our 
guess was this time first thing I'm doing I got this bolt pin that holds it in I'm just greasing it up a little bit makes it easier to keep over the years you know it doesn't wear as much whatever I just like grease and stuff it's fun to play in this grease <laughs> like a big kid right okay so we greased it up plenty uh, so basically the way that it was put together we had these little spacers in here and I guess the bolt went down from the top so I'm gonna try to set this greasy mess off to the side clean my hands a little bit so I can pick up this cylinder and while this cylinder isn't a heavy cylinder I mean I've dealt with some that are really heavy it's still you know just enough to be difficult to maneuver so we got these two spacers that went in And of course, you know, it doesn't want to just be simple. Did I? No, oh, it's still there. Okay. So hopefully, nope, it's got to go down from the top. So even I try to do it backwards. And the hoses want to just be in the way, of course. So you know you just maneuver around the best you can and let me make sure yep got my spacers are in position put my finger in there to try to move them and it still doesn't want to easily drop in Okay, so we're just going to tap this bolt down a little bit. And there we go. Just moving it around enough to figure out where it needs to be. And lightly tapping it to get it in, which still isn't easy because all these hoses and everything are in the way. But there it goes. And that's because I'm lifting the cylinder is why I'm straining a little bit there. So we drop that down and we've got the lock nut that goes on the bottom. So we'll screw that baby on there. Get it as far as we can by hand. Once it hits the Teflon ring, it gets real tight. So we'll have to finish that up with the wrench. But there we basically have our cylinder back on the one side. And what I want to do now is I'm going to need to tighten this collar. And of course, remember I said I cannot, no matter how many tools I bring over, I'm going to forget something. And I forgot the... The wrench to tighten that so here we go once again okay so I went and got the wrench so it may seem like I'm like going a long ways to get this stuff but it's literally 150 feet away so it's not not a big deal but if you had drove out to a location to work on your equipment you know I would say it'd probably be best to have either a truck set up with all your equipment in it or uh, maybe even a trailer with your tools and stuff so that you you know don't forget stuff back at the house or whatever and we're just putting a tightening twist on this it seems to <clears throat> be good so that should be good now we're going to need to pull the cylinder out a little bit to line this steering pin up and we 
got that in there. Of course, I left the nuts sitting back behind me. And luckily Lorena could reach it, so got the nut. Let's screw that back on. And then we'll just need to get a wrench on these and get them all tightened up. And then put the hoses back on. Put a cotter pin in that. We're good to go. Oh, that's the wrong size. So, we're just going to work on tightening this up. Of course, there's never quite enough room to work. Probably why mechanics get paid so much. Thing just wants to spin, so I need to put pressure on it to nope. I need the hammer. What do I do with it? Here it is. Okay, so I'm gonna have to tap this thing a little bit and see if that'll get it in position enough to lock it so it doesn't want to spin on me. And you can see it's still just spinning. Damn it. Okay. I'll come back to that. If you start to get, uh, frustrated on a piece best thing if you got other pieces to work on just move on come back to it maybe you'll either think of a solution or it'll magically fix itself just by being having pressure in a different way or something who knows the ratchet okay And that's a lock nut on there also, so it should hold. And so that side is good. cleaning this up with a file of course I didn't bring a file over here where's my little wrench Same 
problem we had before. Those are all rounded. So it just wants to be difficult. So we'll come back to that one. Have to go get a file and clean that up. And now here's the downside of all this. So we're going to fix this leak, which basically when you fix a leak, it goes back to full operating pressure. And so as the pressure then rises back to normal, then, you know, the way a system works, it's going to seek out the next weakest spot. So the question is, when we start it up and run it, Will it uh, hold up good? Will all the hoses and everything be good? Or will the next weak point blow? That's one thing you never know. Like I said, you pretty much constantly work on these machines. Why is that thing so tight? There. So I'm just trying to get these threads started on here. Of course are tight don't want to easily cooperate problem we got now is figuring out how to get this thing locked into position well enough to where it doesn't spin on us so I think there's still some dirt in that them threads I'll clean those up a little bit I'll get a file to do this other side and we'll keep moving forward Okay, so what I'm doing here is just I pulled this nut off, cleaning the threads just with a wire brush, trying to get any sand and grease and dirt out of there so that hopefully it'll thread together better. I also have the big wrench under it and I'm using that as leverage to hold the thing up, but also I'm hoping I can hold it into place. tight so now I just need to keep tightening it down on there hopefully I can get it to go on without spinning on me so far it's working of course the reason I'm using this wrench instead of a ratchet here is so I can see if it's spinning or if it's going on. As we see right now, it's going on. That's what we want it to do. So, wow, this may be a much slower process turning it a quarter turn at a time. It's allowing us to observe and know that it's going on. So I don't know how many hours we put into this thing so far. Probably all together. 
two to three hours max so I'm sure a skilled mechanic could have done this a lot faster they know tricks etc just lessons learned over the years but here's the difference between skilled and unskilled labor I'm not skilled labor because I haven't been doing this for years I haven't been to school I don't have the training just somebody that's willing to do it and you know that's how we save literally thousands of dollars. And it's going tight. So I can drop that wrench now, I think, and let's see if it'll tighten up. Sure enough. So now I just need to find the hole for the cotter pin. So that's pretty darn tight there. I can just see the hole coming into view. I may have to back it off, yep. I may have to back it off. Which is okay. It's actually why the cotter pin exists there. To lock it into position. Okay. So we tightened it up all the way. Then we backed it off to the cotter pin. Now we need to put the cotter pin in. And so here's the old cotter pin. It's all bent and smashed up, dirty, rusted a little bit. I'm not going to reuse that. I got a new one. So I keep kits of these things around because it seems I always need them. This particular kit that it came out of comes from Tractor Supply. So just put that new pin in. Tapping in all the way. And then we're just gonna bend it so that it's locked in position. And what that does is that now will keep that bolt from loosening. And that's all there is to that. So I also brought a uh, flat file over and I filed the edges on this connection a bit. So hopefully now we can get this thing threaded on and there's unfortunately not a lot of room to work in here so again you definitely have to be patient turns on that baby turning the wrench over and over to get it on there but you can see taking that flat file and cleaning it up the wrench goes on now so I just basically smoothed out those rounded edges probably somebody else that one I didn't get very good oh, I can see there maybe I missed that edge Probably somebody used a crescent wrench to, to do that. Hopefully. That still doesn't want to fit. 
fit on there. So maybe that other side is the same. So we'll to work on it, of course. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. There's a raised spot right there. And working the file in here can be a challenge. on there so that's all you know if somebody else messes something up and doesn't take the time to do it right then just do your best to fix it and move on I wouldn't say I'm a perfectionist because I'm, I'm not far from perfect but I do kind of like things done at least somewhat correctly I'm not a big fan of filled fixes I get it that businesses got to make money and if their equipment ain't running, they're losing money. I get it. But at the same time, uh, equipment's expensive and doing field fixes is basically a half-ass way to fix it. So you're willing to accept a half-ass way to fix your equipment so that you can keep it working and make more money like that. But then at the end of the day, you're going to use it a little while and then turn around and sell it to somebody else and then they got to deal with your field crap so i'm not a fan of that kind of work but you know i get it so all i can say is when it's your equipment you know try to do it right try to take care of it and hopefully it'll uh pay for itself in the end okay those are both on there tight our pins are all tight everything is done so the only thing left to do really is to start it up run some fluid through it and make sure that we don't have any leaks or anything which we shouldn't have I'll also uh, if you notice there was a grease fitting on the end of this so I will uh, grab a grease gun and Put a little grease into that just to make sure it's good and i'll grease the other side as well both both ends have uh grease fittings on them so i'll hit them pump some grease in because i did clean everything out so make sure it's good and lubricated okay so we're gonna lube this up this uh, grease end fitting in for the gun here is one of those lock and lube heads. And I gotta be honest, man, I love it. Okay, and if you look through there, you can just see a little bit of grease popping through. That's really all it takes. You just pump grease until everything is going everywhere. You're just wasting grease. Now this one might be a little more challenging. There we go. Whoa. Yeah, so <laughs> that was a slow process for it to come out and now it's coming out like crazy looks like there's a little hole in the boot right there but that's the way it goes that could be an overflow hole as well i don't know but we know it's got grease now
Okay, so I said it would find the next weakest point, and it did. So this fitting right here is bad. So we're going to pull it off again. Now remember, I cleaned up all these uh, sides on this nut, and look how much easier it is to take off when your wrench goes on cleanly. So much easier. So the work that I did to make that easier is now paying off. And again, there's not a ton of space to work with in here, so turns are little by little. with our hand yet and of course not easier but it's not going to be simple but I guess that defines depends on how you define simple as well you know if you say impossible is something that we can't do then simple is something we can do so that makes a lot of stuff simple. And almost nothing impossible. That's the good news. All right, so we've disconnected that. And we do have a drip pan down below that's catching any fluid here that runs out. And just so you know. Okay, so that nut is, of course, bigger than the wrench that I have, so going to need a bigger wrench. Don't I have a, I don't have a bigger wrench here. So that's probably a three-quarter. All right, so loosen this nut here. Now, we'll inspect this. It may just be that there's an o-ring or something in here that needs to be replaced. Who knows? Okay. a crack there but is it broke or is that how it's made and there's an o-ring here so maybe before we uh waste a trip to town to buy another one of these we'll try to see if we can just put an o-ring on it and fix that problem so that o-ring is definitely bad it's hard as rock it's flat on one side so very common all right so let's go get an o-ring and see what happens Okay, so upon further review, the old fitting definitely did have a little crack in it, and that was the problem. So we did go to town and buy another fitting, so now we're going to replace the fitting. Not rocket science on how to do this. Of course, you can't have butter fingers. Otherwise, you do like me and drop it. But anyway, screw the thing in. And so that thing does have a uh, uh, O-ring on it and a nut that you can tighten it up to seal it. So we just want to get it in there into position, get this other hose screwed on. And then we 
just tighten everything up and we'll run her again and make sure we don't have no leaks but yesterday it appeared this was the only spot that was leaking so we should be good Feels pretty tight. Tighten this down to seal it. And that should be good. Now we'll start her up and check it. As always folks, thanks for watching, please like and subscribe, and God bless.